Hello everyone, so this is the sixth video in the Streamlit series. In this video, basically, we will be looking at the last part of the input widgets, which are, for example, this text area over here. So here you can write some text and uh, you can also enter your birthday or do whatever with a kind of a date. Let's say you want to have your um, uh, whatever it can be, you know, your meeting or your, let's say, uh, interview, anything. Here you can put your timing, you can see over here. So let's put 11.15 and here you can upload any kind of files that you want. And lastly, we are also going to look at a color picker. So as you can see, we are changing the color over here. Okay, so let's go and see the code. So the first thing that we are going to do is import the basic library. So I'm going to say streamlit as st. We will also be needing other libraries, but I'm going to keep it for some time. So let's say we need first the text area. So text area is basically your uh, area where you can write some text. Let's say, for example, you want to write a comment or you want to write a paragraph or something. You can use that. So for that, I have to say text underscore area. And then you have to specify some parameters. So you have to say label. What label do you want? So I'm going to write, write something over here. Write something. Okay. Now the next one is going to be our height. So I'm going to say height is 200. You can definitely change it. So basically it will, as it says, the height of the text area, you will see what it means. Okay. And the third parameter can be max characters. So how many characters you want the user to enter. So you can have, let's say a hundred. And lastly, you also have a placeholder. So if you saw the last video, a placeholder is basically the grayed out text that appears in any of those input text. Uh, or the text area all those things uh, so that you actually get a prompt of where, what you have to write here so let's say i'm going to write right here okay now let's uh, also add one more thing st dot write and whatever will be the text it will be written over here so let's go back okay the last thing that i have to do is open the command prompt and run this file in streamlet so the first thing is obviously going to the folder so it's datum streamlet and then video code and here what i have to do is i have to write streamlet run lecture is six so as you can see we have our text area over here so let me write something so this is this is a sample text and it says press control enter to apply so we will say control enter and then this will apply over here. So if you want to make any changes, let's say, uh, let's put a dot and then let's write some you know, useless text or let's repeat some of the text to go to 100. So you can see over here it is 100 out of 100. It is not going any further. If you write anything more, it will not show. Now what I can do is again hit control enter and you can see all that text is over here. Okay, so you can delete some of them and then come back again. You know, you don't really have to hit control enter. You can just, you know, as you can change the text and go outside of the box and click. You can see that it applies. Okay. So this is the first one. That is the text area. The second one is going to be st dot uh, data input or oh, sorry, date input. So basically it will be used to get the date. Okay. So let's say I am going to have a variable as d d a t, and I'm going to say st dot date input. Okay. So again, you have to specify a label. So let's say enter your birthday, okay, birthday, birthday, fine. So we will have this and you also have to specify another thing over here. That is the value. So this is going to be our, so for that we have to import time date or date time, date time. And here you have to say date time dot date. Uh, date and let's have today's date so which is uh, 2023 okay 2023 comma 4 comma 11 okay so let's see and let's see what we get as the output uh, the thing is that you can also change this I'll show you in a second so let's rerun and you can see our present date has is here and it is also displayed now let's say you want to have a different birthday let's say you are you know let's say 2020 and uh, june and let's say 17 so whatever date you chose over here uh, over here it has been displayed over here okay so this is how you use this 
So this is how you use the date input. Next in line is time input. Similar format, you just say tim or tim, whatever, st dot time input. Again, you specify something over here. So let's say enter your meal time. So let's say you are trying to uh, write your meal times and mean time. And let's say your value is date time dot time. And let's say you are comfortable with two o'clock in the noon. Okay. So let me say st dot write and have it displayed. Okay. So we will go here and rerun this. So enter your meal time. The value that we had given was two o'clock, and you can see over here it is also printed as two o'clock. Let's say you want your meal to be served a bit earlier. So we can say, okay, uh, I can go here and say I want it at three o'clock, or rather one o'clock, not three o'clock. So obviously when you did this, you now have your time changed. Okay. So that was this for time input. Now let's say you want to do something else. Let's say you now want to upload some files. Okay. And this is very important, especially if you're doing a big project kind of a thing, because there you need to upload some files or let's say you're doing some data science stuff. And in that also you have to upload certain images or you know certain text as uh, user defined data. And then you want to process it using a machine learning or a deep learning model. So for that, what you can do, let's say FL is just a variable and then ST dot file uploader. Okay. And then you need to define certain attributes. So file st dot file uploader is just a just a way to upload any kind of a file. Okay, I'll show you in a second how you deal with different kinds of files, but this is a way of uh, uploading any file. Okay, any file of any format. So you just have to give a label over here that is upload here or whatever you want to write. There is also one more uh, field where you can say upload multiple files. You can definitely do that. I'm skipping right now because that's not very important. Okay. It's almost the same thing. Um, so the next thing that we are going to do here is if FL, that is if a file has been uploaded. So what you want to do is I want to see the type of the file. Okay. So I'm going to write FL dot type. Okay. Now I'm going to go here and then rerun. So you can see, uh, this is a drag and drop here, or you can also browse files. Okay. So I'm going to browse file. So right now I uploaded a doggo.jpg. You can also see it on the screen and it says the type is image slash JPEG. Okay. So this is the type. So the way you parse this kind of a file is let's say, uh, if let's say if it is not even JPEG, it's uh, let's say PNG or whatever image format. Okay. So if image in FL dot type, so if it is a PNG, it will also have the image slash PNG. Okay. So if it is an image of any type, let's import one library. So say I'm from PIL import image. Okay. So the day, the way you do it is you are going to have this image and then you're going to say image I, uh, IMG is equals to image dot open. And I'm just going to pass the FL. Okay. Nothing else. And then lastly, what we are going to write is we are going to write ST dot write. And then let's also import NumPy over here. So import NumPy as np i'm not displaying the image right now because that is something that we have to do in next video okay so i'm just going to print the shape of it so np dot array of the image and then just print the shape okay if you want to display the image this img i'll be making another just the video after this the seventh one in that we will be showing how we can uh, print the image or rather display the image so first i'm going to this time i'm going to totally refresh it and I'm going to browse and open the same file. And yeah. so as you can see the doggo.jpg, the same image is there. And now you can see the size is also there. 576, uh, 768, comma 3. So this is the uh, way you upload a file and then you do some processing. If you want to see other processing and how to read the images in the next video. Now let's say you don't have an image. You have something else. Let's say you have a text file. So we are going to say LF and fl dot type and the way you find a text file is text comma plain okay text slash plain so if you have a plain text file for that you need another uh, library so you have to go over here and say from io so this is from the documentation that i have got 
string io okay capital s and capital io now what you need to do over here is let's say you have um, a variable string okay string io okay and the way you do it is you have string io which is the something that we saw earlier and then you have fl dot get value okay and then finally what you do is you decode it decode decode in the format of utf8 utf-8 okay so this is how you do it and lastly what you do is you have to get the string data so string underscore data is equals to string io dot read that's it now what you can do is you can display the data so let's say you have um, you have string underscore data okay you go here and you rerun or let's just refresh it now i'll browse a file so as you can see i had one all intents.txt so this is another video that i'm uh, making right now another series that is a chatbot series so here you have some intents and all those things so this is basically a text file uh, i also had a json file but this here right now is a txt file so as you can see all all underscore intents dot txt so you basically have the file and since it is text dot text uh, slash plane it is able to detect that and print it okay now you're going to have another input that is the camera input so basically you can capture an image from the camera and the way you do it is you say picture picture is equals to st dot camera underscore input and then you basically say take a pic or whatever you want to write take a pic okay so let's say if the picture is captured that is if picture is equals to true or just write if picture then what you can do you can say img image dot open same way and then you say picture okay and lastly what you say st dot write and again display the shape array of image dot shape shape okay so if you go here and if you click rerun so basically what will happen is a camera dialog box will open which will ask you to allow and if you allow the camera will open and then you will be asked to take a picture once you take the picture uh, the if statement is satisfied and then you will be having a uh, the let's say the shape of the image displayed okay so that is there and the last thing that you have is color picker so let's do a color picker so for that let's say a color so color picker is basically it, it is used to pick a color as it state as it states so you have color picker okay and then what you need is a label so i'll just say pick a color pick a color and um, if somebody has picked a color that is if color is not none and then what you can say you can write the color okay so you selected the color this color whatever the color that has been selected okay so we will go here and rerun so pick a color right now it shows black over here you can see there is a box you click the box now this thing appears now you can slide over here to let's say a yellowish region and then you can you know slide in here you can see the color changes so this is the color and the hex is over here that you can see okay i think the rgb values can also be given or the hex value can also be given so the way i use it for example is my uh, mostly thumbnails are of this color zero ff ff zero zero that is total blue and it contrasts really well with zero 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 ff which is totally blue so totally yellow was the background and totally blue was the uh, text so this is how this is the way i use it okay so i hope you understood the video and bye